The other night, I found myself perusing the Switch eShop, looking for something to play, looking for something that maybe would make for a good uh, YouTube video. And I didn't really find anything specific. I didn't really find anything that evoked um, uh, an idea for a video that would be super entertaining. What I did find was a whole lot of games for $2. Now, my understanding is that at some point in the past, Nintendo revised their sales uh, parameters in such a way that the, the cheapest you could make a game on the Switch eShop was $2. So without thinking, I just started buying a bunch of $2 games. I wasted a bunch of money trying to find a good game. Did I succeed? Well, you're about to find out. Let's take a look at the first game I purchased. Gray Skies is the type of game that looks like it's trying to meet the, it's trying to be like The Last of Us, but without any of the budget or the time or the staffing or the PlayStation necessary to make a game like The Last of Us. It's apparently based off of War of the Worlds, which I don't really know anything about, and I assume that it is following the story or some sort of story in the War of the Worlds lore, because when you play the game, the story doesn't make any sense at all. Wow. High quality cinematics you got going on here, my god. Unplugged, uh oh. It's nothing to worry about, lady. These planes are built to stand. They're, they're tested to the utmost limits. Nothing could possibly break. Holy dumb f Wow, that thing really crashed. The best I can do when it comes to explaining the story is like this. You play as this girl. She's on an airline, an empty airline, Malaysian's flight 371, perhaps. And then it crashes. And then she is shopping for beans. Yo. Mega offer on the Cheesy Puffs. Cheesy Puffs, of course, are in the pet food aisle, which is also the soup aisle and the peas aisle, uh, as well as the toilet paper aisle, which is, of course, right next to the other toilet paper aisle. After you leave your money on the counter and fail to notice the corpse in the back room, of course it only makes sense for us to return to plane crash scene. Wow, that was a heck of a plane crash. The damn, the damn ass engine came off. I don't know who I am. Oh, I'm, I guess I'm sitting down. Just a little tired, that's all. Ah. Oh, just sorry, just still a little tired. You suppose the captain survived? Ah, ah. Well, certainly not anymore. What an interesting first two scenes of this game. Scene one, shopping. Scene two, five or six minutes of walking after a plane crash. Creates a very odd fe sensation. But the good news is, I found a first aid kit that must have fell out the fuselage. Probably belonged to some doctor on board. So now I can fix my air, my jet liner burns, my jet fuel burns, and my 77 broken bones from being in a plane crash. Look at that, good as new. We can run now. Oh, which is swell. That whole thing was a tutorial on how to use a first aid kit? Now we're on a farm. So if you followed so far, we went from plane crash, somebody we don't know on an empty plane, to shopping in a convenience store, to plane crash, but get ready, because we're about to go to farm. Now we're on a farm. Somebody help, I was just in a jet plane crash. Whoa, whoa. Yo, that is nasty as hell. Oh God, man, he got totally mangled, dude. Still no aliens. We're, you know, I've been playing this for, we're about an hour into the game and I still haven't seen a single alien. Unless you count that poor man. Interesting that they did the work to animate the wheel turning but simply t didn't time it for when the hands were moving. Where's the damn aliens? Now, to be honest, I think it's clear when you watch me play this game that it is not f a fun game. It's not bad fun and it's not good fun. And when a game is no fun, there's really nothing uh, nothing left to do 
but um, nitpick and make fun of it for its confusing environment design. So that's what I'm about to do. When you go to your local mechanic, do you, first of all, do you expect there to be a bathroom? If there is a bathroom, you're going to expect that it's like a little bathroom that the employees use, like this, right? Just a little bathroom, a little bit of toilet paper. And yet, you go back in this corner, and the, this entire half of the mechanic shop is dedicated to urinals. They install the gigantic eight-person catch basin for men's urine. If you're going to run a mechanic shop, put up a picture of like a car on the wall. Not a Nintendo DSi photograph of your midnight barn. Sorry, that's some. That's just me complaining. First of all, that says Trius. Number pad built into the wall. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. Holy hell. Look what I did to this guy. Good god, I put his face through the concrete. Now after I finished with Gray Skies, I felt a little bit disappointed because in my head, there are so many games coming out for the Switch eShop. Surely, I mean, you know, when people make music, most music is okay. And if you dig around enough, you can find some pretty good music from a bunch of people that, you know, are no names. So I kind of figured the same would be true on the eShop, so I wanted to keep looking. And I kept looking, and what did I find? This. My God, I love this game. Wow, look at this. This is awesome. That is just a great use of a skybox, let me tell you. You think if I stand under this light, I'll get transported somewhere? No. A jar. Well, the music got kind of freaky when I tried to touch the jar. It is so hard to write a game good. It is so hard to write a game that is funny and thoughtful and not annoying and not overly funny or overly thoughtful. To write something that's stimulating and sort of philosophical, but not so much that you're just like, ah, you're just being philosophical now. And for me, this game hits it right, right down the middle. Beautiful day. Excellent, uh, excellent tree walls we got going on here. Look at that. The birds are singing. The sun is shining. And this bridge. It's a good thing it's here. Some sort of cat lives up here. How are you, cat? I don't know how long I've been here. You have the look of somebody who's confused about that. There's a constant pain in my empty stomach. That's horrible. And that's all you've got to say. Um, would you like some water? Because let me tell you, I've got some. The answer is no. Okay, I suppose not. Now, since I originally played this uh, for the footage that you're watching right now, I did continue to play this game uh, there's a lot of different endings, and I've gotten a lot of them, and I've loved it all the way through. You know, the game, the gameplay here is walk, pick up an item, figure out where it goes. You're just sort of logicking things out. It's very much in that point-click Nancy Drew sort of a way, but the vibing, the, but the atmosphere is so good, the music is so good, and the writing, which is the hardest part, is so good. What if I throw my water into the well? I cannot. What if I go into the well? Oh, I can. Oh, the well is where a creepy old man lives. There's a dirty old wizard living in the well, smoking hash. <laughs> How are you, dirty old wizard? Who the hell are you? Listen, I should be asking you that question. Why is there a library in the well? My final wish is to create something without death. Everyone in this game is really stressing about all sorts of weird stuff. One thing I learned recently, within the last 30 seconds, is that this jar that I found only holds the memory of things that can be remembered. 
and often will manifest the memories of the dead or something like that. So that explains why it's so big. Uh, believe it or not, this game was made by a 19-year-old kid who did, does not, not have a PlayStation because this person was born after PlayStation died. So how they nailed that late 90s, early 2000s sort of PlayStation or PC gaming, uh, PC gaming actually is probably even closer, how they nailed that vibe so well, I will never understand. But even more than that, how they wrote something so subtle and wonderful. I just can't say enough good things about it. I love this game. This game is astonishingly beautiful. Look at this tree wall, dude. Look at that. This is an absolute masterclass in vibes. I want to see what it would look like if I played it on a CRT. Oh, I clicked on the bed. And now I'm having a horrible nightmare. Yikes. Uh, ah, uh. What the hell is wrong with you, man? Dude, you got entrails coming out. Put, tuck them back in for God's sake. <laughs> it's literally my only other possession. Thank you. What is it? What is it? Can I put my water into it? Oh, I filled up my thing with sand. L oh, I'm sorry. It's not sand. Duh. Obviously, this is not sand. It is liquid bone. Thank you so much for your liquid bone. And I'll see you later. Do you know how much this game costed me? Two dollars. Shall we see who lives in this cabin? Based on who we've met so far, it really could be anybody. It could, honestly, if Joe Biden was in this cabin, I wouldn't be surprised. Oh my God, he is! Joe! You look great, buddy. You look 10 years young. Wow, he was like, I'm gonna be immortal, but it was like, first of all, your legs are quite the situation. I'll be back to kill you, I promise. Don't worry, buddy. I shall take care of that. Now that I've obtained a sword, I don't know if I told you that, but I found a sword. Uh, I can go kill Joe Biden, which for the Secret Service members listening is a euphemism for jacking off. That's what the kids are saying now because they're so fond of Joe Biden. They call it killing, killing in like a good way. You know, it's like, oh, you killed it, man. You go, I'm going to go kill Joe Biden, you know. Can I, am I going to get in trouble for this? Please don't listen. Hello, sir. I have good news. Your death will be swift. Please come back to kill me. That's what I'm here to do, buddy. Stupid logic puzzles being complicated. But that's part of the fun. If you got them all right on the first try, what kind of a game is that, you know? How about this cat? Oh! Ah! Oh! That wasn't supposed to work! Oh God, uh, drink some water. Did I just fill up a vial of his blood? I can't believe I just did that. So in trying to answer the question of what can you get on a switch? For two effing dollars, you can get a horrible game that's not any fun. I'm sorry if you made it, but it, you'd need to try again. Or you can get something that is deeply touching and super interesting. Open your mind because the experiences you can have for almost no money are pretty dang, dang great. Pretty dang great. All right, that wraps up this video. Thanks for watching me spend a bunch of money on uh, on the Switch eShop. Sorry if this, if it, this comes across as a little sort of haphazard. I did not figure out what this video was gonna be until after I had filmed all of it, so it's just what happens. If you enjoyed this video, please consider supporting me on Patreon. And as always, remember, and as always, leave a like, leave a comment. It helps out the channel. If you wanna see us thrive 
and not die. Thank you so much, and as always, enjoy the song today. Thank you so much, and as always, enjoy the song.